Kepler's laws of planetary motion. With a proof of Kepler's second law. The orbit of every planet is an ellipse. With the Sun at one of the two foci. An ellipse is defined analytically as the set of points, such that for each point, the sum of the distances to the two foci is a fixed number. A line joining a planet and the Sun, sweeps out equal areas during equal intervals of time. This implies that as the planet moves away from the Sun, the speed of the planet decreases. A key question is, what is the relationship between planet velocity, and the position of the planet? The square of the planet's orbital period, p, measured in Earth years, is proportional to, the cube of the ellipse's semi-major axis, a, measured in, say, miles. Isaac Newton proved all three of Kepler's laws using Euclidean geometry, algebra, calculus, the second law of motion, and the gravitational law. In space, we show a planet at location, p, in motion, with a velocity vector, v which is tangential to motion. An acceleration vector is shown, in dark red, at a random position and direction, as we do not know, at this time, the direction of the acceleration vector. The relationship between position, velocity and acceleration, are shown at the bottom. Here we define the cross product, u cross v, shown in blue, of the two vectors, u and v. The cross product vector is perpendicular to the plane formed by vector u, and vector v. In the geometric definition, u cross v equals, the magnitude of vector u, times the magnitude of vector v, times the sine of the angle, theta, between vectors u and v, times the unit normal vector, n. In the algebraic definition, u cross v equals, in symbolic matrix notation, the determinant of the 3 by 3 matrix shown. Both definitions of cross product will be used in this proof. Here we have two laws for force. The first, is Newton's second law of motion, force equals mass times acceleration. The second is Newton's law of gravity expressed as a vector field. A picture of the gravitational vector field is shown in space. The vector field is radial with respect to the origin, and the magnitude of the gravitational force between masses is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the masses. Equating these two vector forces, and cancelling little m, we see that, acceleration is a scalar multiple of position, that is, vector a, is parallel to, vector r. Consider vector l, equal to, r cross v. Vector L measures angular momentum per unit of mass. Now, taking the derivative of vector L with respect to time, we have, by the product rule, the derivative of the first, cross the second, plus, the first, cross the derivative of the second. Vector R prime is velocity, vector V prime is acceleration. Noting that, vector V is parallel with itself, and vector R is parallel with vector, A, from the previous slide. Then, by the geometric definition of cross product, V cross V, and, R cross A, must both be the zero vector. Since we have shown that the derivative of the vector L with respect to time is the zero vector, vector L must be a constant. Vector L is, by the definition of cross product, perpendicular to both vector R and vector V. It follows that, the motion of the planet must be in the fixed plane formed by vector R and vector V. We now need the multivariable calculus chain rule, using partial derivatives. Consider a function, g, with two independent variables, say, r, and, theta. We want to calculate the total derivative of g, 
with respect to a single parameter, say, t. The total derivative has two paths, red and green. The formula is shown at the bottom. Basically, it is the elementary calculus chain rule, bumped up a notch to include the two independent variable paths for, r and theta. Here we calculate the vector L, equal to, R cross V. To do this, we recall that the vectors, R and V, are in a fixed plane. This, now allows us, to write the position vector, R, in two dimensions, not in space. That is, we write, vector R equals, X, comma, Y, comma, zero. Now, convert to polar coordinates. Next, compute velocity as the derivative of position, with respect to time. To calculate the velocity vector, we use the multivariable calculus chain rule, for each of the components of the vector r. Finally, we calculate vector, l, r cross v, using the algebraic definition of the cross product. You will note that many things cancel using algebra, and, a trigonometric identity. Taking the magnitude of the vector, l, we get, r squared d theta dt. But, as previously shown, vector L, is a constant vector. Yes, both R squared, and d theta dt, change, with time and motion. But the product of the two, is, a constant. That is, the planet's singular momentum, almost by magic, is, conserved. So, why do we care? We now compute the area swept out by the line from the Sun, to the planet, using the area formula for polar coordinates. From elementary calculus, area is equal to, half the integral of, r squared, d theta, evaluated from, angle alpha, to angle beta. We transform from the angle domain, theta, to the time domain, t, by writing d theta, as, d theta dt, times the differential, dt, and adjust the limits of integration to the time domain. But, alas, r squared, d theta dt, is the magnitude of angular momentum, which we have determined to be a constant, and can be moved outside the integral sign. As such, we have shown that the area swept out by the line from the sun to the planet, depends, not on position and time, but only on, the change in time. This ends the proof.